I could actually see the needle bounce off the zero pin. <laughs> the VGs cause drag, I believe. You have enough. There. Yes, they help with the stall performance. But they slow the airplane down. What exactly was the cruise speed now? All that great data that we have today, that's, that's amazing stuff. <laughs> All right, so this is the flight video for flight eight of the Hawken modified Super Lance Air 320. The owner of the airplane, uh, Hawken Langbro, is a uh, aerospace engineer who works at General Atomics down in SoCal. Uh, like so many of us engineers, I think we can all kind of relate to the guy that uh, does one thing for work and then wants to sort of expand on it after hours. So, you know, at work, he's a, an engineer and that means a lot of analysis. It doesn't necessarily mean a lot of hands-on work. In his free time uh, is taking those same concepts, the same sort of stuff he gets to work on at work and just expanding the responsibility level by doing it at home uh, with maybe even a bigger payoff and that he gets to uh, you know cruise the country in an airplane that can both land super slow because those modified flaps but also pew, has the top end. The airplane is a modified Lancer 320 uh, with a completely custom and new uh, Fowler flap style flap system for it uh, with the goal being to lower the stall speed and therefore slow down approach speeds without uh, dramatically affecting the uh, high end speeds. I'm sure you're aware but just in case you aren't there are seven preceding videos before this one. One. Just in case you need more context, feel free to go back and watch those videos. Thanks for coming along. Before we get too carried away, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Method 7's been with us uh, since the very beginning of Wasabi, and we're excited to uh, continue to work with their brand. They do great things for aviation and uh, make a great pair of sunglasses to boot. Uh, Butler Parachutes, we work with Butler as well since the beginning of Wasabi, and they uh, continue to make a parachute that gives me the confidence I need in the cockpit to do the work that we need to do. And lastly, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, I've really been surprised with uh, the people that have signed on uh, to help with Patreon, especially in these uh, times. 2020 hasn't been easy for anybody, so it, uh, it means all the more uh, to have you guys' support. Uh, thank you. Okay, so we just, uh, Hawking just noticed we Lost the gap seal here. Yeah, I wonder if you'll be able to see it come off on the on the camera underneath. Uh, no, uh, you can't see the tape come off uh, in the video. And you said uh, you popped one of the VGs off here? Uh, so, no, well, the one there, I removed the inner one. Oh, there was, one, there was one more here? Yeah, so that was Lewis, so I removed that one. However, on this side, that was here. Okay. It's gone. But maybe we don't need them in the first place, I don't know. The uh, Gorilla Tape held. Yeah. So in Flight 7, we were able to uh, successfully demonstrate that the static indication error was uh, fixed with the new static port. Uh, we were able to show that our VGs were giving us more uh, lateral and directional control uh, in the stall. But probably the biggest thing for me was the frustration with having an airspeed indicator that just wasn't up to the task, right? I mean, we were showing something like 10 knots below the lowest indication on that airspeed indicator. And so as a result, uh, the question was, what do we do with the rest of the day? You know, I had driven out there, it's like a four o'clock launch from my house to be there uh, after seven o'clock brief uh, to fly. We had a little couple more hours left in the day and we were just trying to figure out what was the best thing to do next, uh, especially since there wasn't much value to continue to do stall testing with an airspeed indicator that uh, wasn't gonna work. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna remove the, uh, the outboard ones on the tip. I don't think they're necessary. I think that it's good to have, but I don't think they're necessary. We, okay. we will see when we, yeah. when we try so, it out. So what I recommend is, so the next flight, the, the purpose is uh, cruise performance check. Yes. But since we're gonna fly, I you think we should stall. You should stall. And I think if we're gonna stall, we should have one camera on the tail looking forward. Yes. So, but we don't need to have both. So we got rid of, you know, four out of five of the cameras. Yes. But we'll leave the tufts on the whole airplane. Yep. But we're getting rid of the, most of the external cameras. We're getting rid of the trailing cone. We're gonna go up and do a performance check and try to get an idea of what the performance hit is from the, the big VGs yep. Yep. Uh, at the wing body fillet. Cool. So back to the big theme from Flight 7. seven. We decided to look at the other side of the coin, right? So it's it's nothing to be able to fly infinitely slow if you don't have the top end that makes a Lance Air a Lance Air. So we decided to dedicate Flight 8 to just proving that top end speed. Pulling off the VGs. <laughs> it's like a... Leftovers. <laughs> yeah. So we pulled all the tufts off the left side of the airplane. Uh, we pulled a couple VGs off of both wings. You don't need the tail uh, tufts either, I believe. 
didn't have an update on that. And the idea was that uh, we would first verify that the stall behavior was still similar to what we had seen uh, on the previous flight, but now with less drag from the tufts, uh, less cameras in the breeze, uh, and no trailing cone, uh, we were gonna try to figure out what exactly was the cruise speed now to give us confidence the VGs were acceptable. Uh, the VGs cause drag, right? They slow the airplane down. Yes, they help with the stall performance, but they slow the airplane down. So at the cost of raising the stall speed slightly, since we're probably a little bit below our, our goal stall speed, uh, we could bring the top end speed up and get that cruise performance that uh, makes the whole program work for Hawking. Okay, so we ended up removing a couple of the VGs out here. And then we've removed all the tufts off of this left wing. Kept the tufts on the right wing. And we've left the associated camera on the tail to look at those tufts. And then we have a camera out here to look at the wing, or to look at the wing body fi uh, fillet, wing body fuselage intersection. The uh, couple tufts removed out here on this side. The uh, VGs on the inboard wing and the fuselage are all the same, right, Hawking? They will be. They will be. <laughs> okay, and then we replace the uh, elevator gap tape on the left side. And took all the tufts off the bottom of both horizontal tails, since there won't be cameras pointed at them. The purpose of this flight is really a lot of performance, but there's a little bit of stall stuff in there too. Okay. Uh, we're talking about a um, series of flat of stalls. Do you want to do um, the two different static conditions? Uh, the stall. Yeah, for the stalls. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. At least one checkpoint. Okay. All right. So it's a normal takeoff climb. Uh, we do a bunch of stalls, so I'm gonna go to 10,000, and then we're gonna do a series of stalls at 45 and a series of stalls at 35 degrees. You wanna hit uh, zero too? Probably, because we've changed the VGs. Yes, let's do that. And you have a camera on the GPS, right? I have uh, my head cam. You probably need a station here for the GPS. So, you can so I tried up. to cheat that shot, the airspeed shot right, but it's so far over. There's not really a good place to get and point at that. I can look at it. From, for the GPS? Yeah. Can you put it here? It's their suction cups. Oh. Uh, we'll, once I get the can proposal, I'll take a look at it. We'll do what? Uh, uh, three at each flap setting? Three and then a fourth one with the other static? Yes. Okay. I, uh, I'm not going to get too worried about trying to get the speed exactly right, uh, but I'll talk about um, talk about the number that we're seeing out the the indicated number. The, the little number for the temperature. And know that it was nine to 10 before, between nine and 10 before. So when we show the airspeed indicator for these stalls, uh, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in the comms. But so on the low side of the airspeed indicator, when the uh, scale drops off, it becomes the temperature window in the top of the airspeed indicator for calculating true airspeed. And so what we did is we just left the, the wheel in the same spot. And then I'm just counting off uh, those temperatures as though they're air speeds because we're going to go all the way to the zero indicated So you'll hear me count off 10 9 8 etc. Since he knew where we were from the previous stalls He understands uh, how that plays out But again, this is as we get into this weird world where we don't have airspeed indication and you know What are we doing uh, and what's the long-term plan and how does it all play together at the bottom of that reversal? Oh for the stall. Yes, correct Yep. Which is equivalent to what we think is 50 yeah. <laughs> uh, and then a cruise point at 8,000, uh, 2992. We want to do that uh, in tunnel. three directions so we can get the ground speed from sure. the GPS. You want the um, indicated and ground in each? Yes. Uh, everything else holds from this morning? Or from earlier, I should say. It wasn't really morning. Yeah. Uh, you'll follow along on the handheld. Yep. Turn on 320 Hotel Lima, Ramona Tower, northbound departures approved. Runway 27, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff.
Uh, tower, Stream on 88 Lima Charlie, we'd like to enter your airspace low approach uh, to the west table. Stream on 88 Lima Charlie, approved. Make a straight in runway 27, eight. information office current off number 3020. Winds 270 at 8, report 3 mile final. Stream on 88 Lima Charlie, straight in runway 271 code and 3020. Okay, first stall. 75, 70, 65, 60, 55, 10, 9, reverse. Just a touch below the 9 on that one. Okay. Here it comes again. That's uh, 9,500. below the nine, just like the last one. Feet seventy five.
25, 70, 65, 60, 55, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, bouncing off, bouncing off the pin there, 7,500. I'm going to do that again with the primary static. Static is set, 80. Alternate static thing. Power's coming up. Slaps are coming up. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Full power set. And we're climbing. Uh, with the alternate uh, static selected, I could actually see the needle bounce off the zero pin. <laughs> okay, 200 feet to go. Starting to reconfigure. Roger that. Gears down, I got three green. Plus 35. Okay, here comes stall number one, 80 knots. 75. 70. 65. 60. 55. 10. Nine. Just touch the eight.
the next one. That was lower than 45. Yeah. It's that reversal thing, man. I guess. Okay. 75. 70. 65. 60. 55. 10. 9. 8. And just touch the 8 again. Nice. Repeatable there, and I don't see the bounce uh, on the airspeed indicator. Static has been switched. That's seventy five. Seventy five. Seventy. Sixty five. Sixty. Fifty five. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Bottom of the gauge. Are coming up. 8,000 feet, back to primary static, showing 80 knots. Here comes the first one. Okay. 50.
55. I think it's more like 
And there's the bounce. Yeah, the bounce off the eight. Did like a double bounce on that one. Okay. That's about 45 knots. Out to 80. 75. 70. 65. 60. 55. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. Oh. Recovered. So just as we were climbing into the airplane, uh, Hawken realized that the battery for his uh, iPad uh, nav unit, the battery charger had failed. Uh, without a GPS, we almost had to screw up the flight. Uh, the workaround was I was just going to use my cell phone. So uh, you can see me here uh, using the cell phone uh, to uh, to get a GPS speed to, to uh, for the GPS cal. So we did the uh, cruise flying at uh, 8,000 feet uh, pressure altitude because that's what uh, Hawken did all his analysis at. Uh, we flew uh, uh, three legs of a triangle at uh, wide open throttle and 2500 RPM, uh, which resulted in uh, a true airspeed of about 144 knots, uh, which works out to about 126 knots calibrated, and we were indicating about 135 all the way around. So we still have pedostatic air, even with the new static system. It's obviously uh, really close for cruise and probably fine for an experimental. But the more interesting thing is we've lost like 30 knots uh, off our cruise speed based on the previous testing. On flight five. Five! 
at the same pressure altitude and power setting, we found a cruise speed of 170 knots indicated. That's with the old static system. When I say power setting, I mean wide open throttle and 2,500 RPM. Uh, so where did the speed go? Uh, we started looking at the data and it looks like we weren't getting full manifold pressure. So the assumption coming out of this flight was that uh, the same reason that the, the throttles are moving uh, when you retract the gear, there's some sort of a cable infringement uh, there in the belly that's actually pulling the throttle off the forward stop. More work to be done on that. Or maybe not one by one, but uh, a few at a time. So you bring up a really good point. The, um, something you mentioned earlier that maybe I didn't say out loud, but I made me think was that if it all comes down to landing, then we need to do this, some of this in the landing phase. Oh yes. We need to move towards the landing phase. Yeah. So, um, Like for instance, if you don't have indicated airspeed in the stall, maybe it doesn't matter if you're never there, but at 1.3 for approach, you need to have it, right? So that puts a little, now we're up into a speed where, does that make any sense? Yeah, I would probably fly the approach similar to an RB, which would be coming in a final at 80. Oh, at 80? Yeah. Well, 80 then we'd take the VD off. <laughs> Good point. It's a good point. I'm just thinking that that was the speed I flew the RV, and it was not because of the stall speed. It was because of the sink rate. Huh? Because that's a short, stubby wing on the RV, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and if you go slower than that, first of all, you have a higher angle of attack, and, and if you lose the engine, it's just going to go straight down. Huh. Granted, this one has a more slender, high aspect ratio wing, so. Sure. Probably, if you can go slower, if you can go 75, which is like flying a Cessna almost. <laughs> yeah, we, we so have... So if it's 45 and then 1.3 would be what? Uh, that's 12, so that's uh, uh, 57 approach. That's yeah, so a 60 knots roughly. Gosh, it's unbelievable. That would be almost scary. <laughs> well, and the thing about 60s, I'm not going to do that on that. Like, I just no. go to it, right? You got to do some build up, and we're going to have to oh, go up yeah. the altitude and feel it around at 60 and talk about go arounds. And yes, I mean, you can't go around in a 737 at landing flaps, but like, you need to be ready to pull them up when you got to go yeah. around. Yeah. The other thing that, that, you know, the indication that we have right now is that the stall speed uh, with 35 and 45 flap seems to be identical from our indications. The only difference is that the sink rate is higher in the 45 because of the higher drag. Right. So it almost tells me that under normal circumstances, when you don't need to need, when you do not need to lose altitude quickly, right. the 35 setting would be probably your normal setting. I think that that's gonna be decided by a go around what you consider acceptable Which stuck is flaps probably climb rate. Yes. It's going to be marginal at 45. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, but all that great data that we have today, that's that's amazing stuff. You know, right. Stall speed down at the, even below 50 knots. And with a little bit of power on, you were down at 45. You know, that's... And that's where, like, if we just if we just had a different airspeed indicator and yeah. just went and reflew all these points, like we would have numbers rather than this like bullshit extrapolated like yeah. call the engineer like hey man like yeah. if you're like three yeah. quarters of an inch from the seven, in how accurate? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, to your point, it's probably repeatable, but what the fuck the speed is? I don't know. Well, we have some GPS readings, right, from your from the previous flight. Oh, we can look and see what we have, yeah. Yeah, and do the average of that. It's just, it's just so dynamic. I, I, I know that, but so when, when we did the average of the GPS speeds from Before. flight six, yeah. we were at 53 knots, which seems to indicate roughly where we are right now, huh. which is super cool. I mean, no, it's way, way cool. Yeah, way cool. and that was with 35. So let me put it a different way. Yeah. If it's $150 for an airspeed indicator yeah. that you can see the number, yeah. this is my speed. I will start looking for that. I right? Mean, I mean, I don't know. And you can probably dump it right back on eight, uh, eBay when you're done with it. And uh, when Do you have any digital? The MGL is a digital. It is a digital. It is a digital. And that's what I'm saying. It'd be the same as what you're going to end up with in the in the dyno. Right. right. Uh, I, I hope. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I don't. And the other thing you can Google real quick is what's the, how low a speed a dyno will show or whatever your plan is. It will, it will go down to zero. 
But it, the, question, it, the question is how accurate is it? Right. Because you have pedos, you know, whatever. I mean, will it show 15? Is it zero and yeah. then one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, or is yeah. it zero and then 15? No, and then it will show. One, two, three, four? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. As far as I remember, I mean, obviously I have didn't pay attention to that in the RV, but that, I, I do remember that, you know. Because the other side is if you're, where you're headed doesn't have, is never gonna be able to indicate below 50 knots. Right. Then that's the yeah. same thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm.